Hello, welcome to Beginning Engineers. Today I'm going to be talking about a skill that is super important for almost every job, but especially engineers. If you're an engineer or going to become an engineer and you think you will end up in management someday, get good at project management. It's a valuable skill for anyone. What is project management? Project management is the application of knowledge, skills, tools, and techniques to activities to meet project requirements. So you're applying all these different things you know and are capable of to meet the requirements of a project. Well, it follows then, what is a project? A project is a one-shot, time-limited, goal-directed undertaking requiring the command of different skills and resources. So it's very important to think about a project as something that is going to end. There's limited resources and limited time. Ongoing continuous things are not really projects. You can have a project that runs over the deadline, but something that goes on forever is not a project. It has a well-defined lifespan and is considered complete when all the objectives are met. The project management body of knowledge, also known as the PMBOK, I'll talk more about that later, defines a project as a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product, service, or result. So a project isn't just something that makes a product or delivers a service. It can be many things. Let's talk about some examples of projects so you have a good idea in your head for the rest of this video. Building an apartment complex. There are hundreds of thousands in the world, but they were all built by different people, at different times, with different resources, and with different designs. Even if you have the same crew and the same project manager building a new apartment, they're still using different materials and oftentimes sourcing from different companies, or even building that next apartment at a different time of the year. Just think about all the things that go together that make one apartment complex. The doors, the screws, the bolts, the wood, the concrete, the timing, you have to get all that there. How is it going to get there? So many different things go into it. It's a great example of a project. Setting up software for a large Fortune 500 company. So imagine you have to set up SAP or Oracle, you know, enterprise resource planning software for a huge company. Data integration must be mapped and tested. So how is the data going to go from their systems to yours? Is it going to work? You have to make sure the right IT people are involved from both sides. And before the project is over, you have to make sure the people who are using the software on a daily basis have tested it and gone through a normal processing day with the software working correctly. My final example is one that's not directly related to a job or making money, at least not most of the time. Training someone to lose weight and run a course within a set time. So maybe like a 5K or 10K or marathon. Think about it. There are clear goals. Multiple resources may be involved. A strict timeline is in place. If that course occurs like in a month or two, you have that set deadline. And clear communication is needed when timeline goals are not met. Why didn't you meet the time? What could you have done better? And what can we do next time? Those are some examples of projects. But who all is involved with a project? What are some roles in project management? Well, at the very top, you have the project sponsor. This is the person or group providing resources for the project. They're providing the money. They're providing the time. They're helping set up communication and different contacts on different teams. Then we have the project management team. This is that team that is directly responsible for the project management activities. They make sure the project's within scope, within cost, and within the time. It's up to them. Then you have the project team. This is the group actually performing the tasks to meet the end goal. Sometimes the management team will actually perform some of the tasks, other times they'll just manage. But those doing the work, those accomplishing the goals, that's the project team. Then we have project influencers. All those outside the above roles, they're not a sponsor, they're not on the management team, they're not on the core project team, but they affect the project in some way. From a very high level, what does project management involve? It involves identifying requirements. You have to know what is needed to be successful. You have to establish clear and achievable goals, known as define. Define what you need to do, when, where, who should be involved, and make sure the goals are clear and understandable so that you know whether you've met them or not. 
And of course, the main idea is that you need to balance cost, time, scope, and quality. Beware of scope creep. And this is a problem that occurs when the scope gets larger and larger over the course of a project. It starts to include things that were never meant to be in the project. This may seem obvious at first, but if you're new at interacting on project teams or with clients, you'll find that scope creep starts out small, but then it just keeps growing. And of course, as the scope increases, the cost is going to go up and the time will as well, because you will need more money and more time to maintain that quality. Beware of additional costs. If something costs more than you plan for, examine why and what can we do to reduce this, mitigate this extra cost. Beware elements that are taking too long. A lot of the great tools with project management are focused on time, and we'll go over some of those later. If something takes too long, you might not meet a goal. And worse yet, with projects, so many things are dependent on each other. So if something takes too long, it could affect many other areas in the project. Beware of lower quality. Sometimes if you're trying to meet the cost set out for a project or the time, you'll find that doing so will lower your quality. So you'll notice with this triangle, it's very much a balancing act. You have to go back to the scope of the project. You have to clearly communicate. If you're not going to meet the quality of a project and you need more time, you have to determine if that's something the project will allow. So it's all about managing expectations and resources. The best managers do this so well. I've worked on several projects where there is a dedicated project manager, and you can immediately tell the good ones because they communicate up front, they're clear about where things are headed and what the expectations should be. They don't let the scope get out of hand. I mentioned working alongside great project managers, but what else makes a project manager great? Clearly knowing the goals of each phase of the project and how to transition smoothly between them, a good project manager will know this. So you can generally break out projects into the following phases, initiating, planning, executing, monitoring and controlling, and closing. In initiating, you decide what is the goal of the project and you begin to gather the resources and form the team. In planning, you determine how the project is actually going to be executed, who's involved, where, and when will things happen. Executing is actually performing the activities. And almost simultaneously, you have to monitor and control these things to make sure that they are within scope, within cost, and within time. Closing is wrapping up the project and evaluating whether it met its goal or not. A great project manager will also have great knowledge and experience in managing the 10 knowledge areas in project management. These are project integration, scope, time, cost, quality, human resources, communication, risk, procurement, and stakeholders. If a project manager has experience and knowledge in these areas and can execute on each area as needed, a project will generally be successful. But even the greatest project manager will need tools, so let's talk about a few examples. The two examples I'm going to be talking about are both part of a type of tool called activity sequencing. This focuses on the activities involved in completing a project successfully. The first activity sequencing tool is known as the precedence diagramming method. This is where you use labeled shapes and arrows to identify and document the relationship and flow among scheduled activities. Even the most simple projects rarely flow in a single line from A to B to C. So here's an example of one below showing how things can split off into different branches and then reconnect later. It shows the differences between different activities. So you'll see on the left there it says begin. Then there are three activities that can happen simultaneously. Activity A, Activity B, and Activity E. Then you'll notice A and B converge into Activity C. This means they are precedents for Activity C. Before you can do Activity C, you must complete A and B first and so on and so forth. The only thing else I'd like to point out in this diagram is how activity D is a precedent for both H and G, but G is also a precedent for H. So you can't do G until you've done D, and you can't do H until you've done D and G. So you would have to do D first, followed by G, before you could move on to activity H. 
and think about all the resources and how you would have to split time. If you want a bunch of resources up front to have A, B, and E done at the same time, you probably don't need all those resources once you come to I because it's just one activity. So you can begin to see how the planning is critical to the success of this project. These times are captured in the chart shown on the right side of the slide, so you can begin to record the estimated times, seconds, minutes, hours, days, depending on the project, and you can put them in a table along with the precedents that must be completed first. One of the key benefits of the precedence diagramming method is that you can identify the minimum amount of time that the project can be completed in. This is called the critical path. If everything goes just right, what's the soonest we can complete this project? So think about each square in that diagram taking a certain amount of time, because it does. Each square is an activity. You would look at all the different paths and see how long they take to complete. The one that is the shortest from beginning to finish, start to end, is your critical path. Ideally, you can get the project done that quick, because everything else you can do simultaneously because it will reconnect later at some point. A good basic example of this would be doing errands around the house before you leave. Say you need to wash some dirty dishes and wash some dirty clothes. You have a washing machine and a dryer, and in total they take an hour and a half to clean your dirty clothes. Let's say you're not going to hang them up. Let's say your dishes will take you 20 minutes. What's the soonest you can leave the house? That's right, it's an hour and a half. Because while your clothes are washing and drying in your machines, you can be doing the dirty dishes at the same time. The critical path is an hour and a half to get you out of your house. The next activity sequencing tool is known as a Gantt chart. And honestly, I see this one more often. A Gantt chart is a bar chart used to track the length and time of different activities, with the start and end of each bar corresponding to the start date and end date on the timeline. So a bar can't begin until after the bar representing its precedent activity, so the activity that must occur before you can do this activity, ends. So it's similar to the precedence diagram method, but this time you can actually see how long things take based on the length of the bar. And again, you can flow through your Gantt chart and find your critical path. You can also have a timeline up top that shows the number of weeks or actual dates and then look down into the bars to see where you should be at. So that's a very nice feature as well. So how do you actually become a project manager? Well, you have to work in it, and you have to study something called the Project Management Body of Knowledge. This is the official standard terminology and guidelines for project management. It describes the critical path method and work breakdown structure in addition to the five process groups and ten knowledge areas. So a lot of the things I've gone over already. It really is the ultimate guide for project managers. The guide itself is overseen by the Project Management Institute. This is the official certification body for CAPM and PMP certifications, which are ways to indicate that you are an official project manager. CAPM and PMP. CAPM stands for Certified Associate in Project Management. This is the entry-level certificate for those involved in executing projects, so you've been involved in project teams. It requires 1,500 hours of work experience or 23 hours of project management class work. You get certified through PMI and you get an official certificate. A PMP is a project management professional. This is the next level up. It requires 7,500 hours or a four-year college degree and 4,500 hours leading and directing projects in addition to 35 hours of project management classes. So unlike a CAPM that can just be involved in project management teams, a PMP has to actually lead those teams and direct projects and take classes on it. Those who have a PMP certification are nationally recognized. Both these certificates involve tests that ask questions based on content in the PMBOK, the Project Management Body of Knowledge. These are incredible boosts to resumes because pretty much any career involves working on projects. And if you understand how to form the teams and how to lead them to meet the scope of the project, you're going to be a very valuable employee. Thank you so much for watching this beginning engineer's video. If you like my videos, feel free to subscribe. I hope you now understand why project management is so valuable, what makes a great project manager, 
and what are some examples of tools you'll use when you're managing projects. Have a great day!